Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and in this video, which is sponsored by my good good friends at Squarespace, we're going to be making this cool foam style slide shoe. It's really easy and it's a lot of fun. We'll use some procedural and image displacement to create logos and this cool tread pattern and even a little weight painting to control those things. This type of shoe is really in right now so it'll look great in your portfolio, especially if you're interested in getting into product rendering like me. Let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to delete my camera and lamp, but I will actually hold on to the default cube. What I'll do is tab into edit mode, scale it down on the Z-axis. This is gonna be kind of the base of our shoe, something like that, sorry, the base of our slide. And um, I'll scale that out on the Y-axis. And then I'm just gonna add a couple edge loops to kind of start making this a little bit more of a shoe shape. So scaling that out on the x-axis, so I've got a nice coffin shape there, very morbid in case uh, you need a coffin tutorial. That's great for you. Um, I'm gonna wanna add one more edge loop actually right here. And maybe we scale this whole thing out on the y-axis. We kind of want uh, some edge loops right around here where we can make our sort of, you know, the slide strap of our slide. Um, and we can, of course, edit these as we go, but something like that is gonna be pretty good to get started. I'm not starting with a reference, which uh, would probably be a good thing to do. I'll also kind of move these over so it's a little bit less symmetrical. I know nobody liked in this shoe tutorial how it was a symmetrical shoe. We're not gonna be doing that today, but just getting this to sort of a nice shape Maybe something like that looks good. Now to actually create that strap going over here, I'm going to select these top bases and then press I to inset them just till we have uh, something about like that. And then I'm just gonna select this face right here. And then in my front view, I'll press E to extrude this up. And then I can actually press Control and right click and just do this a couple times and that will extrude to my mouse position and then to close this all off, I'll just select this other face and then right click and in my loop tools menu, I will bridge those edge loops now before you go any further. If you did not have that option, you can go up here into your edit preferences and in your add-ons, you can search for loop tools. That's one that comes with Blender, but you would wanna install that. Otherwise you can just connect the faces like you normally would. Um, so that is looking decent. We're in good shape here. Now to smooth this all out, I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier and you could add it right here or there's a cool hotkey. You can press control and then the number of subdivisions you wanna do. So I'll do four and that will automatically add the modifier with the levels specified. Now that is gonna be your viewport versus render level. So we'll need to adjust that later. And we're gonna be adding quite a bit of subdivision here. But that's looking pretty good. We've really got kind of the basis for it. So now it's just a matter of sort of shaping this out, adding some more details to get looking how you like. So I'll do some of that right now. Maybe we want this area to be a little flatter. And you know what, actually, maybe we'll add in one more edge loop right here. Um, so that this front area can be sort of flat and then maybe in the back side we'll kind of pull that out a little bit. So maybe just kind of coming right there, something like that. And then this maybe scale out on the x-axis. Just kind of playing with this until you have a nice shape. Now maybe we want to have this bottom be a little flatter. So I might do the same operation down here, just selecting these faces, pressing I to inset them and just pull in a little bit. Now, we don't wanna to have too much geometry to work with because that will make working with this shape more difficult, but we are gonna to wanna to try to have you know a decent amount and have it be sort of even around so we don't have too many weird stretching things happening on when we go to add in some of our modifiers. Uh, but now would be a good time to just consider adding some additional details. One thing that I thought looked cool was to sort of extrude out this sort of part right here, I don't, know, I don't know what you wanna call that, so that the whole thing was a little bit more up on the, the individual's foot, which maybe we scale this down and kind of pull that out, something like this, just selecting sort of large areas here um, until we have kind of a nice shape. Um, that's looking pretty decent. It looks like maybe this whole area needs to kind of come back a little bit, just using my circle select command. Again, not using a reference here, which is not the best way to go about things, but, uh, not too bad. So just switching around into my different views, 
I'm, I'm struggling to make this not symmetrical. I really want to make it symmetrical. Um, but something like that I think is looking pretty cool. I also added in a just a little bit of a, a heel, you know, sport mode, if you will. You want to get pretty intense with it. Something like that looks kind of cool. And then maybe we, you know, select some of these verts and just kind of pull it out a little bit. That's looking nice. Um, maybe this whole bottom area. Let's just select all these faces right here. There's a better way to make this selection than the way I just did it, but maybe these all come down so it's a little fatter. And we can even add in another edge loop right here and then Alt and S to scale along the normals to give that sort of a, a little bit of a poofed out, cushy shape. And then for Let's hold it right there and talk for a second about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is your go-to place for building a beautiful website from scratch. If you don't have a website or maybe you've thought about upgrading your website, then Squarespace is where you want to be. Whether you're setting up a portfolio site where clients can reach out to you using a contact form or even trying to set up an online shop, maybe for those cool shoes you're designing right now, Squarespace can handle it and make it look professional. With a vast array of easy to use templates and modules and their new Fluid Engine, you can have a website that looks good to anyone that stumbles across it. Don't wait another minute and follow the link in the description to squarespace.com slash Dirk to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's get back to it. For this area, we could do the same thing. Um, we could just pull this down if we want a little bit of a, a recess there, or if you want that to be a tad sharper, you could even inset this once more and then sort of pull this down, something like that. And then, you know, maybe in the front here, this would want to come up a little bit more, but I'm going to keep working with this and feel free to pause the video and continue working with your own just until you have kind of a shape you like. Okay, I'm thinking, I think I like where that ended up, looking pretty good. Added some extra cushion in the back here, shaped up this area. Glad I didn't try to talk through the whole thing because of course I spent way more time than I anticipated. Um, just kind of brought some geometry together here in this area to create a little bit of a, a stop where your toes would roll over. Again, we're not using references here if you wanted to make a shoe that you were actually going to wear. You definitely would want to do that, but I think for me, I am liking the way this looks. So let's carry on to the next part where we are going to add in a procedural displacement to create sort of a tread pattern on the bottom. And I mentioned displacement, so let's go ahead and add in a displacement modifier. We can go ahead and search for that here. Now I'll add that after the subdivision. It's gonna make our 
shoe look very chunky. So I'm going to press new right here. And then this will jump us to the texture tab where I will change this from image or movie. And I'm going to use the wood texture. And that is what that looks like right off the bat. So looking pretty cool, but it's everywhere and that's not what I want. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is go over to the modifier tab and then pull the strength down on this quite a bit to something a little bit more reasonable, maybe something around right there. And we, like I mentioned, don't want this to be going on everywhere. So we can control where it goes using this vertex group option. So we don't have any vertex groups on this object, but we can create one in this tab right here. So let's press this plus sign and let's tab into edit mode and let's select the area that we want to have that texture. So I'm selecting the bottom here and then I'll press control plus to grow that selection. And then I'll press assign and then that will assign the weight of one to those selected vertices. So let's press assign there. And then we don't need to worry about naming that, but you could, and we'll select the group right there. And now you can see the texture is only being applied right there. And that is just what we want. Just having the texture on the bottom like that. Now we can control this texture. So the default right here is just this bands. We can change this to band noise, and that would allow us to introduce some noise. So the size of the noise, we probably want to be pretty large. And this preview is actually quite helpful. Um, so maybe something like that. You can control the turbulence of it to kind of decide how much noise is going on. And this is sort of up to your own creative control here. Um, but something like that I think is looking good for me. Now we can have even more control over this by rather than the coordinates being this local option, we can set it to an object, which will then need to select an object. So I'm just going to create an empty object. I'll just make that a cube and we can leave it right there. And then let's select that object. So what we'll be able to do now is move this around and get different looks to the texture depending on how we have it set up. And the most useful thing to do here is by just scaling this texture to kind of get it the scale that you want. Now, the smaller you go, the more geometry you're going to need to be able to actually see that. So I'm actually going to bump this up to the maximum six levels so that we get a really clear look at that texture. But of course, that is going to be adding quite a bit of geometry into our model. Um, so you can see we can see a lot better now, um, but still, if we go too small, that will become too dense. So, you know, use an appropriate amount of subdivision, depending on what you're going for. Something like that looks pretty good. You know, if we wanted to, we could rotate this on the Z axis if we wanted this to be a little bit more of a straight texture. But yeah, using this empty is a really handy way to control that texture. Now, you may want to have this affect other parts of your object as well. I'm actually going to scale this up a little bit. Something like that looks good. Like, you know, if you wanted this texture to kind of creep up on the sides a little bit, that's something that you could do. So the way we can do that is if we press control and tab, it'll bring up this pie menu. You could also select this mode up here, but control tab, I'll change into a weight paint. And you can see that the vertex group is selected here is what we're seeing. So red is where it's fully applied. And then, you know, you have it kind of fades off to blue, which is zero. So we can actually paint in other areas where we want the texture to be applied. Now, sometimes when you click on the model, it's going to feel like nothing's happening. And that's because we're not actually over a vertex. And if you recall from the geometry, there's not really a ton of vertices on this mesh. So um, it's going to feel like it's kind of not doing too much. But you can see that the texture starts to kind of creep around into the areas we add that paint to. So I can just paint in different areas. I'm just clicking here to do that, to kind of have it creep up in different locations. You know, maybe it kind of comes up over here a little bit. We can paint that in and you can press shift in paint and that will blur the paint so that it's not so um, drastic, these changes. So, you know, just kind of blurring the edges here. I don't want that to creep up too much in this back area. So again, just holding shift and painting into those areas where I don't quite want it. Maybe we actually want like a little texture um, on the heel here. So we could kind of, or sorry, under, under the arch of the foot, um, something like that could look cool. Maybe it's a little too much Again, just pressing shift to blur it. Um, just adding it kind of wherever you want, you know, maybe we can have it creep up the front a tad, blur that out, maybe some over here, blur that out. And let's just kind of keep blurring this till we have 
little bit of a more subtle effect right there. I'm going to want to put some text or something right here, so I don't want the effect to creep up too much. Um, but something like that's looking good. You know, maybe you almost didn't want it on the total bottom of the shoe. You could do that like that. That could be a cool look. Um, but this is looking pretty good. So that's one way to affect that vertex group beyond just selecting vertices and having the, the weight of one. Because now we have, you know, different weights in different objects or in different areas corresponding to these colors here. Um, so let's switch back into our object mode. And now you can see we've got a little bit more of an interesting shape here where we've got that texture kind of creeping around. And still, you might have seen in my Instagram post, I animated this. We can just kind of move this texture around or even change the displacement texture to be something else to control the way that looks. You know, we can change the size of the texture. Sorry, this, this is the size of the noise. Um, but yeah, just play with these settings until you get something that you like. And I think something like that is honestly going to work pretty good for me. Maybe I do rotate the texture a little bit so that we don't get those kind of weird knobs on the side of the shoe. Something like that looks pretty good. And maybe we even go back into our weight paint and we kind of get rid of some of it right there. I don't quite want that knobby look on the front. So let's just remove it from there and maybe remove it right here as well where we're getting that effect and then we can blur it. Okay, I think that that's looking pretty good. Of course, mess with yours as much as you want. I'm gonna to try to <laughs> call it a day right there. That's good, that's good. Let's go back into object mode. Um, so yeah, we've got kind of that nice pattern here. Play with that as much as you want, but again, I think that that's looking pretty good. So what I wanna do now is, I guess we can go ahead and do a little bit of a lighting setup. So maybe what I'll do is press Shift A to add in a camera. I know we had one in the scene originally, but I deleted it. I'm just gonna move this out on the X axis. And then let's just press Alt R to reset our rotation. And then uh, I always mess this up. I kinda wanna, I like to have my camera on the Y axis. So I actually want my shoe to be going the other way. And one thing is if we move the shoe, the texture is gonna move with it because that empty is where it is. So let's just take this empty and parent it, or sorry, parent the empty to our shoe object. Control P, keep transform. Now when I rotate my shoe, the texture won't move because the empty is parented to it. Um, so we've got our camera out here. Let's rotate that 90 degrees on the X axis so it's looking straight ahead. And let's split our viewport up just a little bit. So this is how I usually like to set it up. So I'll hide those toolbars with N and T, and then just look through my camera view. Let's go into our rendered view over here. Um, this will end up being a shader editor where we can do some shading, setting up some materials. But um, I've got this gray world now, which is a default. I'm just gonna turn the strength down to zero so I have that dark black world. That's how I like to start my lighting. So I'm gonna press Shift A and add in an area light. And the first one I'll usually do is just kind of drop in right there. And maybe we put this shoe at a little bit of a more unique angle so we can kind of see what we're working with here. Something like that might be cool. So first light and my computer has begun to whiz in the background now that we're rendering. And I am rendering in the cycles engine, by the way. So um, you can do this pretty well in Eevee, but I'm typically like to render in cycles. So one light right there, maybe we pull it up a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna add in another light to the back side here. This will be sort of a rim light. Maybe it's just a tad underneath, something like that. Now this light I'll make a little bit larger and I'll pull the strength on it up quite a bit, just again so we can get that nice rim detail right there. Now I'm not getting a lot of light on the front of the shoe right here. And I do wanna be able to see it just a little bit better. So I'm gonna duplicate this light and just move that to some other area, maybe down here, maybe just something kind of like that. And you know, while we're in here, let's just do a little bit of shading so that we don't have this plain white shoe. I'll just start off with like a little bit of a red color right there. I think that's looking pretty good. And the roughness, you know, maybe we make this a little bit more rough, like foam. And yeah, I'm liking the way that that looks now. Before I go too much further in the shading, which we will do a little more shading, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about how we can start adding in some additional details to this with another displacement modifier. So let's add in another displacement modifier. Now this time we're gonna use an image texture to control that displacement. So instead of using a procedural texture, that band noise like we used up here, I'm gonna use an image texture. So I'll press new, and then over in the texture tab, I'll change this from wood to image or movie. 
and then I'm going to navigate to an image. Now I'm just going to use the image I use almost all the time, which is just my sticker sheet. So I will select that right here. I think I'll use, I guess I'll just use this one. Um, so now we have this texture being applied sort of all over the place. And right now it's being applied with those local coordinates, but I want to have it be controlled by the UV coordinates. Now there is a UV map on this object, but it's not exactly where I want it. So I'm gonna pull open a UV image editor right here, tab into edit mode, and then I'm going to select the image right here and then just press U. So in this view down here, I'm gonna press U and then just smart UV project, press okay. And then just move this into a white area of the mesh. So white should have no effect basically. So I need to change this mid-level up to one. Again, white corresponds to a value of one. So right now with um, the whole UV in this white area, we should see no effect. And that's what we're getting right now. So I do want to have some effect in some areas. So the way I can add that is by selecting a few parts of this mesh where I do want the texture, like right here, for example, and then pressing U and unwrap. And that will unwrap just that section which then I can move into an area where that part of the texture that I want exists. Um, now we can't see this while we're doing it. So what we could do is check uh, this box right here, which will show it in edit mode. And now you can see what that's doing. So we've actually got that um, applied to that area. Now you could control which kind of way this goes by just adjusting your strength value to be negative. Like if we want that to pop out, now, again, this is going to depend on how much geometry you actually have on the mesh. So you need quite a bit to be able to see um, small details, especially like the text I'm adding here. So we might actually need to add in another level of subdivision, but maybe that one will add after this displacement. So I'm, I'm liking that the way that this wave texture is right now. Um, so I'm going to add in another subdivision surface modifier. I'll just search for that right here. And then I'm going to pull that one it's going to be getting pretty slow depending on the power of your computer when you start adding all these subdivision, but we'll put that before this one and we'll just use one level there just to give it a little bit more detail. Now, um, some of this kind of artifact that you get is partly due to the quality of this image. So this isn't a super high resolution image, but in this case, it's really more the level of subdivision. So again, you need a very high level of subdivision to have something like text come through on an object like this. So we've got six levels up here, which let's go ahead and put that to six in the render as well. And then we've got an additional layer being applied here. Now, one way we can kind of smooth this all out is actually with a smooth modifier. So I'm going to add that in. So we'll use a smooth modifier. And I'll have that be at the very bottom. Now this is gonna smooth this part of the shoe out as well, but that's already pretty smooth, so that shouldn't be too noticeable. So let's bring the factor on the smooth up just a little bit. And now this can always be a little touchy to play with, but sort of balance between this factor and then the number of repeats you do on the smooth. So if we do that a couple times, it should start to smooth out a little bit and look a little bit more like a you know, sort of like the foam look we're going for. So that's looking pretty nice. Um, also, I don't need this displacement to be quite so strong. So maybe I'll just type in a little bit of a lower value there. Something like that looks decent. Yeah, you know, you can almost just do that with a bump map. So maybe we go a little bit higher just to make it pop some more. And yeah, something like that is looking cool. You can see now we've got nice text, you know, logo, whatever you want to do right there. The choice is yours. And maybe we do just a little bit more text. Maybe we just do this whole area. We'll do another dirk.com over here. You could do, I could do my logo, but uh, I kind of just want to do another dirk.com. So I'm just going to again, press U and unwrap. And just because this is a flat area, we don't need to add seams or anything like that. It's just going to you know, do a pretty good job of unwrapping that relatively flat area. Um, so again, this is going to be really slow because we are showing it in edit mode. Wouldn't be the worst idea to sort of guess and check and disable some of your subdivision, but rotating that a little bit until I get it right there. And then, gosh, yeah, I need to, uh, let's uh, turn off this one and let's turn this down to five. And this should perform a little bit faster. So let's pull that to right there. That text will get very worn out depending on the weight and the amount this individual wears this shoe but there it is on there let's pull back some of our subdivisions just so we can see it nice and sharp and yeah that's looking good so we've got the dirk.com sitting right there which again i need to update my website i still haven't done that so don't worry about going to dirk.com unless you want to 
hire me for your job or something like that. But got the dirk.com here, got the dirk.com there. It's getting all smoothed out nicely with this smooth modifier. And uh, yeah, we're in pretty good shape with the model itself. You know, I would encourage you to um, think about adding some text maybe on the bottom or, you know, yeah, working with some other designs, other patterns to add uh, more details to your slide, whatever you might like to do. Uh, but that's looking good. Let's just touch up this material a little bit more. Uh, we're going to use some procedural textures to give a little bit of bumpiness to this. So I'm going to press Shift A. And uh, actually, we'll do Control T on here first so that we can set up our texture coordinate mapping and image texture nodes. Um, now, I, I think they're implementing this into Blender, but you might need to turn on the Node Wrangler add-on, uh, which also comes with Blender to be able to do that Control T. Um, I'm going to delete that image texture, and I'm going to add in a texture, and we'll do a, a Voronoi texture. I'll plug this into the vector here. And let's use our object input so we're not working with the UVs in this case. And this distance, I'll plug into the normal on the principal shader. And I'll do a vector bump. Drop that right there. Pull this into the height. And now we have our bump working properly. Um, now the distance, uh, we're not working to scale here. You can see this shoe is about the size of a car right now. A little bit larger, actually, I think. Um, but this distance is working in our Blender unit scale, which is like meters. So... Um, let's just pull this distance value down to something a little bit lower, first of all, and then we can also control the strength here. Um, now, I'll have this inverted so that it's bumped out, kind of like foam. And now this is not affecting the actual geometry. This is just affecting the look of the texture. So it's kind of fake height right there. And you can see where we have that plugged in. So let's pull our strength down a little bit. And really what we need to do is bring this scale way up until we kind of have a nice foam texture. Now this is up to you. The file that I sort of posted on Instagram had a couple more parts and pieces to that. Uh, that'll be what's in the Patreon file, I think. But this is a pretty quick and easy uh, way to get sort of a foam texture there. And I think that that's looking pretty nice. Now another thing we can do is control the subsurface value. So if we pull that up, we can start to have light kind of come through our shoe a little bit. So let's just put that weight at something like 0.5. And then we'll probably want to control the scale to get the look we're going for. So now it kind of starts to look like a, like a little bit more like gummy shoe. Now that might not be a look you want, but it looks kind of cool, especially if you have kind of a lighter material, something like that. You kind of got that red from the subsurface. And this is R, G, and B, I believe, with the radius. Uh, I think it's set to pretty realistic default values. Red light transmits more or does subsurface. I'm not a scientist. But just mess with these values. Have, have yourself a blast. But um, play with the color, get something you like, and consider using the subsurface as well to make it look a little bit more foamy or gummy. Um, the choice is yours. I mean, you could even you could even do a uh, you know you could do a transmissive shoe if you wanted to have like a look really really gummy. That would be pretty cool. And now part of the reason I'm getting this look is also the the way my lighting setup is. So um, depending on how your lighting is, this is going to have a lot of effect, especially if you start working with transparent or uh, materials with subsurface scattering. But I'm gonna turn that transmission weight off um, and just use a little bit of the subsurf here to kind of give it that gummy look a little bit and maybe pull it back to a uh, red or something like that. But the choices are yours. Have yourself a good time with your slide. Definitely uh, like and subscribe. First of all, I don't think I've said that, but um, yeah, just get this looking something cool. Tag me on Instagram, would love to see kind of what you all come up with, I'll kind of keep playing with this. But yeah, this is a sort of a, a lightweight shoe tutorial, you know, lightweight in the fact that this is not a heavy shoe, but lightweight also in the fact that this is a little bit easier than the other shoe tutorial, which now is relatively outdated. We're in Blender 4.0.2 right now. So um, yeah, definitely check the other one out if you want to make like a super cool shoe. But honestly, these shoes are pretty cool right now, too. So yeah. Render this out, you know, you don't need a ton of settings, especially if you're doing, sorry, a ton of samples, especially if you're doing a still render. Um, so this is kind of the way I have it set up by default. 600 samples, denoising, this should look pretty clean. Things like transmissive values and subsurface will require more samples, especially if you're doing an animation. But if I just press F12 and render this now at the default 1920 by 1080 with 600 samples, and I have a uh, 4090, I think, whatever the latest-ish graphics card. Well, I've had it for like a year now, but it renders pretty quick. You can see here we got eight seconds to get this still image. So 
render out your images. Uh, maybe in a separate part, we'll cover some animation. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. I'm really excited to see what everyone posts. You know, tag me on Instagram or wherever else you like to share work. Would love to see your own slide designs. But uh, hopefully, I'll catch you in another part where maybe we can cover some animation, different things like that. But, anyways, Thanks for being here. I'll wrap this one up. Like and subscribe. Check out the full file on Patreon if you're interested in that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks again for being here. Peace.